Hello. Contrast. Right. I need my light on. Sorry. I thought it was a bit dark. Anyway, here we go. Happy Wednesday. Sorry, it's early morning. It's not early really. It's 10 o'clock. But, uh, well, it's near enough. Um, I want to get uh, through the classes. I can't do Tuesdays for three weeks because I'm, uh, I've got another class booking by a local art group that want me to do four, four weeks. So I've done what I did one yesterday. All right, another three to go and then I could do Tuesdays again. <coughs> um, we're into acrylics then today. Class uh, seven, I think it was. Yeah, I've got it all wrote down and otherwise I just forget everything. Class seven, yeah. Class eight, <laughs> tomorrow, class nine. On Friday, so uh, we get quite a bit covered this week. If, you, if you're keeping up, if you're not keeping up, then it really doesn't matter. You can just pick and choose what you want to do. Okay, so um, I'm going to like um, splash a bit of paint on because of this one, because it's a lovely view of uh, Buttermere. Yeah, the bottom of Buttermere. I forgot the name of the mountain, so you can always tell Buttermere with these line of trees uh, uh, lit up by the sun. Um, colour wise there's not a lot of colour in it really, there's only kind of a few uh, tonal uh, different changes in colours, um, it's quite a dark picture as well, so you've got quite a lot of, of um, shadows and contrast, which makes it quite nice, but then uh, creating a depth in something like this is quite hard really, uh, because uh, everything is the same colour, you know, even the background tone, so we'll have to kind of make that slightly uh, less and uh, less of as bright, if you like, as what is on the picture. Um, again, we can break this up into shapes, we've got a lot of reflection in the water, um, which we could do as a glaze, yeah, uh, just letting things run and blend and then paint into it, I don't know. There's a lot going on in the water, so it's not just straightforward glaze. Uh, it's um, dropping other colours in. And um, we've got lovely purples and blues in this in these mountains. Some alizarines on the other, the other mountain. And coming down here, we've got some lovely rocks, uh, grass, uh, a bit of a fence. I can't see much without my glasses. So. Uh, a bit of a fence. There's a little house over there. I'm sure that somebody's going to find it. Uh, I didn't make the... I didn't know it was there at first. Anyway, if you want to paint the house, you can do, but I don't think I'll be bothering. Uh, it's just a dot of white and blue, so you can put that in. And um, yeah, it'd be great living there, wouldn't it? What a view they've got. Anyway, so without further ado, I ain't going to sketch it, I'm just going to put some colour on. Um, looking at the picture, I mean, we can paint the sky uh, lighter, so it doesn't really matter. If you, if you break it up into the horizon line, which is just above halfway point, so you could actually just um, put a line there, and then everything above it is, we can start doing dark uh, purples, alizarines, uh, yellowy kind of greens and sienas uh, coming down, even into the water if we want, because we could let that blend a little bit. So we could carry this section all the way down all of this into the water and then paint the sky afterwards seems the simplest way of doing it um, and then we've got the foreground shirts which we want to make brighter so again that's going to be a lot more yellow and a touch of green so we are using um, usual colours I've got gallery acrylics yeah I'm going to be using cadmium yellow or processed yellow which is a nice strong yellow um, get some of that out on my palette. Um, Elizabeth Crimson and Burnt Sienna are your next two colours, so these are the brighter ones as well. So we can add some Burnt Sienna, because that makes, well it's mixed with yellow, makes gold. And then we've got Elizabeth Crimson, that actually makes the, um, the lovely purples and heather on the hills and things like that. We need quite a bit of it, I'm actually, Running low on some paint, so I'm going to have to reorder uh, from Grantham's. I shouldn't be advertising them, but I will. Um, ultramarine blue, again, that's quite a nice cool blue. 
transparent, mixes really well with with uh, alizarin to give purples. I'm also using a bit of cerulean, uh, mainly for the water and bits of the sky that are lighter, even this foreground bit because you've got cerulean blue on the rocks here, you know, which we can put on first, let dry and then paint the dark bits around it. And you've got a bit of sienna there as well, so it's quite warm. So I've got some, just a little bit of cerulean blue, I don't want a lot, um, and then main, our green, which again, if you're using alizarin and green, you're going to create these lovely dark tones, which is which are what we want in the image. I cannot get into this green. <coughs> it just keeps clogging up every time I use it. <coughs> Excuse me. Lovely dull day outside, so... Uh, and the flowers are growing now, that's a great sign. First day of spring uh, yesterday, was it? Probably. Um, so we're using some green. Uh, just get a little bit of that out. Oh, way too much. Um, <laughs> I'm not dirty my water, so I keep not what I'm doing with that. Just put the green out and a great big blob game out. That's, what's that, that's what happens. Uh, <laughs> push the... Uh, you need to make these holes bigger, I think, because they get clogged so easy, easily. Anyway, turning white, turning white, nice, strong, pure white colour, okay? Very nice. Um, we, we're going to kind of use quite a bit of that. Okay, and it's my interpretation of the scene. I'm not too interested in uh, in what uh, in what it is the details of it really. Apart from the foreground, bits of detail, splattering techniques, things like that. Just going to show up my curtain a bit because it gets everywhere when you splatter. Um, I was very loud in your ear then, weren't I? <laughs> so, don't do sketching. Sketch later, okay? Look at colours, okay? So, the first thing I need is actually pure yellow colour, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm um, looking at the image. This is what we need. This kind of beautiful siennas and yellows and golds, uh, things like that, just in this area. And we can also have a little bit of a lizard here. So I'm just going to put this in as well. You can see. Um, I have gone over my blue area, but uh, I could put a bit of cerulean blue there. Just in this kind of area, you can see. And when that dries, you've got to, you've got rocks and whatever, because it's going to go lighter. It's going to go a lot lighter, okay? So that's the foreground bit. And I've done that first because I want to keep, I want to keep those colours lovely and uh, cool. Lovely and yellow. And then here, we've got um, a little touch of green and quite a bit of yellow. Uh, okay. Uh, coming down from the mountain in the side of the, that uh, mountain, there, uh, but we've got her horizon line. But it's also going into the water, so I'm saying that, I've just mixed all my yellow with some green. The green is very, very um, strong. Fail of green is very strong. And it, it's, you only need a slight, a slight amount to get this change in tone. Now, uh, so <laughs> I've put too much green with it, so it's actually gone a bit, uh, a bit, uh, bit of a change there. So uh, yes, keep it in the distance, keep this lovely light. Anything you kind of not don't get uh, that's not, you know, you don't get in the right place can be easily, easily kind of rectified, yeah, because you're gonna, you just want these reflections in the water, and that's all I'm on about. All I'm about at the moment. And then we get to our sky. Now the sky is blue and red. Okay. It's I'm gonna do the mountain top. So if we get look here and then we look at this mountain, you can see that beautiful shape like that and as it's coming down into the valley. Uh, we don't want a lot of runs this way, we want the runs that way. Um, get some more blue and we just scumble that across the top. Scumble that across the top. Let it blend into the mountain because it doesn't matter. 
uh, we can uh, soften these edges and things like that. And they get lovely kind of cool colours, warm colours. Don't let the drips run too far down the pits if we don't want too many um, dribbles because we've got this lovely kind of bluish shape there which we want to keep on this mountain top. Okay, that's that lovely dark. So I have actually, have you look, gone into the shape of this mountain. Yeah, uh, and that's the main thing. I can put a line there because that's a dark shape. <coughs> and then I've got this reflection in the, in the water, which is giving me that kind of shape as well. Okay, this area is going to be a little bit of bluish purple again, uh, just for the reflection of that. And see, so this is coming into that area and then the water's going to be here. Anyway, I've got some nice big boulder shapes which I can put in using this brush uh, because it's um, it, it's got this lovely covering power and uh, it's got a big marks to make, yeah. And the sides, things like that. We can um, slightly splatter a little bit uh, just with some... I usually use a lizarine and burnt sienna to give us some strong, stronger darks. You can add a bit of ultramarine with that and then you can splatter things here to give you rocks and pebbles later. Okay, keep that area clean because we can use that as our uh, sky area. Or you can actually blob it in if you want to get the sky in near enough. That shape, you're halfway there, aren't you? So you just blend it in like that, yeah. Uh, okay, there are a lot of things you can do with acrylics. You can actually um, put it on, take it off. It's all about transparency, so we want to keep that lovely transparent feeling, you see, to it because you can see the light coming through there uh, around the, the boulders and what have you. Um, we can have this hard edges and then the mountain tops and light coming down the mountain like this, you know. It's creating texture, whatever you do down there, do up here, because it's reflected. Uh, we're going to go darker there as well, and this is dark anyway, because it's the mountain top. Okay, so out of this chaos, which I should have mentioned at first, is that uh, we're going to kind of make it uh, very similar to this image the image okay um, <clears throat> using darks and lights so from that I can go lighter but I can also go darker if you splash water on as well you can actually lift bits of colour off we can splash a bit of blue in there if you don't like splashing this this kind of technique then you can always um, just pick the colour up on your brush and flick it on like that. This gives you nice small splashes, nice marks, and the flicking or hitting your finger gives you bigger splashes. So, like I said, everything's in the keep it in the distance. We've got these lovely glazes that we can do on the mountains. Uh, stand back now again, keep your colours transparent, that's the main thing. So, you want the light travelling through the pigment and then it's coming off. <coughs> It's, re it's rebounding back and then it's giving you these lovely, lovely dark, uh, transparent colours. You won't get anything as bright as transparent colours, okay? Uh, because every, every time you use something with white in it, it flattens it, okay? I can scratch you off, just looking at this now actually, uh, because we've got uh, rocks here. Let's, uh, we're getting the lights is catching the rocks in places. You can just see a lovely kind of shapes. And if it's wet enough, or it's still wet, you can actually make these the shadows on these rocks. Can you see? You get these really nice shapes uh, like that. You can leave dark edges. So the rocks, shapes of rocks, really important, and they bring it forward. They bring everything forward yeah because of detail so that's uh, that's the reason I do this so I can bring that rock 
forward a bit, which is actually a reflection of this bit here. Um, I don't want to carry on doing pallet and half because there is a, an actual separate section of pallet and half painting which we, we do next week, but you can use it for scratching out and whatever you want to do. Okay, so while I'm here, <coughs> while I'm looking at this picture, I'm just going to glaze some of this hill. Uh, when we look at this mountain, we've got some lovely lights on it, but we've also got this it's kind of a lizarding colour which is knocking it back. And then we've got the darks on the left hand side. So I'm just I'm just gonna put that shape in and then we need to put the horizon line in. Like I said, it's above halfway. So if you look at if you say that's halfway, no, that's halfway. Like that. So you can measure it with your brush. So that's about halfway, but we need to be above that. So we need to be about here where the um, the light changes, okay? Like that. And we can put a line there. Or you can scratch into it just to give you a, a lovely highlight where the, the mountain meets the land, yeah, where all the trees are in the distance. Uh, we don't put those in yet, you want those to be uh, towards the end, yeah, um, because they're just kind of blobs against the background landscape. But we can put in the, um, the very, very thin horizon line, if we can get it, keep it thin, naturally. I'm just starting, like I said, about here. I want to keep that. Uh, so I just uh, break it up. It doesn't have to be all the same tone. This is where the water and the land meet, okay, in the distance. And then from that, you get the shape of the the uh, the river, the um, the lake, and everything. You start to see other colours. All right, we've got some beautiful kind of. Uh, colour here on the right hand side just above that gate uh, which is also reflected a bit in the water um, and then on the mountain we've got this lovely kind of sienna <coughs> uh, shape there again if you go too too dark if, it, if you're quick enough you can scratch out to get some of that colour back so if you look at the the, the, the mountain against the water just scratch a bit out it's gone dark it's gone light uh, just so you get these shapes can you see on, on the mountain uh, and soften edges and whatever um, not not a lot everything's coming this way really so it's coming down the mountain if you miss anything out you can always put white and the color together and create that um, that shape now I'm just going to look at that mountain because we know that uh, there's a lot of people who know about mountains and they know that uh, there are specific shapes and what have you. So I'm just going to paint the shape of this mountain uh, first uh, to give me a rough shape of it. People will be able to tell where it is then. And then on this side it's kind of coming down. Uh, but, uh, it was going quite steep there. Need to be thicker paint, thick paint, Elizabethan blue, very opaque. Yeah, as you're coming down, you've got these lovely kind of shapes coming up to that ridge in the mountain where it changes direction. So this curves, like that, a bit more blue with it. This curves in a little bit, if you can see, and then it just goes out and then it stops uh, and this is where you get that lovely shape of the side of the mountain as you get to here this is where you get these ridges where the shadows are stand back now again you can see the shadows here as well on this side as it comes down into <coughs> that valley where this blue is i'm going to use that blue we can keep this darker because that's a that's a wall i think coming down from the left hand side there's a tree there, I know that. There's trees all over the shop. We can put trees in anywhere we like. And then down here, again, we're coming down right to the, the just past the halfway point. We get the kind of hillock, which is going that way. And then coming down. So this, this edge and this edge. So I've got something there, and then I've got something there, like that. You see, and then it slightly goes 
off in this direction you've got some light just catching that hill that mountain I'm just trying to get the shape right before I actually do it. anything else really and keep that um, of the shape of this hill in the distance okay um, and then we can do the same on the other side we can get some alizarine so here it's quite dark we can go all the way down we can use this I don't want to cover some of that light up because I want to keep some of it because it's nice and uh, it gives a lovely shape to it but I do glaze all of that background shape so when we do the sky which is quite a bit of white with blue <coughs> we can also pick out the mountain top I'm just giving the sky uh, a little bit of time to um, to soften and blend um, and then I'm just gonna mix a little bit of white and blue yeah because I want well, quite a bit of blue actually because I want me up my blue to be uh, a little bit lighter as it comes down into the valley on that mountain at the back you see so we want these beautiful kind of blue tones and a bit of white and they're actually on the hills as well here yeah just catching the light there coming down the hills in the distance like that um, and that'll go lighter and we can also use white a bit of yellow for instance some sienna you know anything to warm something up that we've lost when we splashed all that colour on um, which is the main thing uh, so here we're seeing some of these little simple lights coming down that mountain as it gets to the other one then we're going lighter so I'm going to leave that <coughs> and then I'm going to use some white and blue and a bit of ultramarine blue and cerulean blue mixed together quite a bit of white again and then we can look at the mountain top uh, just picking out the shape again uh, you don't have to do all the sky just go down to the mountain and give that lovely <coughs> lovely light around it so it's like the top of the mountain uh, you go lighter as you get down to the mountain range so it goes deeper further behind yeah and now here Again, we've got the same thing. So it's opaque paint. Lots of white with it, the blue. Yeah. And as we're coming down, we need to come to about here, right there, because that then is the other mountain. So that curves in a bit, and then it blends into there. Uh, and then we get the mountain range on the left-hand side. Okay. So I'm just creating that lovely depth behind those hills. When you put uh, you can put a bit of white in there if you wanted to put some of these uh, little clouds in and things just sort of like that I, and you can actually just add the white to the blue as you put it on and that gives you this lovely depth behind the mountains okay so here we've got uh, quite a bit of white because it's got this lovely kind of cloud that's floating about behind it and in the sky so that's all you need really uh, and then we carry on up here this ridge went a little bit darker because we want a bit more uh, ultramarine with it and then we'll, we'll look at the ridge and then we'll get this beautiful blue shape like that and do the shape of those that ridge in the sky again <coughs> going that a little bit lighter as you get down to the horizon over this side here yeah. so you add more white just keep it to the shape okay there's a bit of a kind of a bump there so I'll put that in because I'm going to tell me off that's all and then the rest of it I also want this purple going into this warmer colour uh, in, the, in the background and when you look at that now it's actually not far off uh, finished really that area apart from little bits of detail because um, this is the bit where we uh, we just add other tones so we can glaze all the things because we get uh, light coming down that mountain like that. 
which is a cool light and a warm light and things like that, and just leave that irregular kind of shape. Take that off the picture, like that, and then we can scumble. It's dry paint, and you're actually seeing the blues <coughs> underneath. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can scumble, you can do the same here, can you see? Like that, the, the, the sky, uh, the clouds coming in. Uh, on that right hand side, do the same here. And, uh, so it's just dry paint, and that gives you the cloud effects, okay? Lovely. Um, and again, I need to have that really dark shape of the mountain. This again, it's a lizard ultramarine blue so because of this it's the shadow don't forget you can also use uh, your green and red uh, well, that will give you really strong depth I'm just looking some of these shapes now uh, we've got these little areas uh, that, uh, that change tonal value you can see and you've got a lovely shadow there that's nice. and then that one goes from here down it's a bit lighter uh, and then we're going I want to keep some of that uh, we can go a little bit lighter with the blue area so we can add some uh, light to that blend it in uh, do it with tissue so we just get that cool cool kind of blue and this mountain at the back on the left uh, as it gets to the edge of the ridge uh, it goes kind of stronger, so you get these really strong areas of tone coming down. Because uh, <coughs> everything's coming down the mountain when she comes, yeah? That's, <laughs> yeah? that's it. And then I want this reflected light, which is about here, onto this shape of that mountain there. So here there's a lot going on because it's a reflection. We've got some lovely big. <coughs> rock shapes for rocks we can use burnt sienna we can use ultramarine alizarine and then just looking along this edge where i've actually put some of the reflections yeah now the thing is when i've used something to scrape off i get textures and uh, i don't want to lose the textures underneath so i, I want them to stay so what i'm doing as I'm just painting negative space around things and then hopefully a lot of the grass and things like that is going to be in the right place you know and I can make other rocks as well because you've got artistic license so I can do other things uh, you know keep your brush slightly down because we have very very thick paint so this is coming off uh, it's going into a big rock shape uh, this is a big Curve and then this goes into the water anyway, so we've got this kind of splattering the texture of the grass, okay? Like that. <coughs> <coughs> if I splatter in like that, you give yourself lovely random marks. Your brush has to be wet, um, it has to be kind of quite dark, yeah? Because you, you, if you do things like that, you want the texture of the grass against that rock and it's not one continuous tone it changes it changes all the time it goes around rocks here you get these lovely shapes you know so you can start adding bigger areas this clump of grass white and red white and sienna um, not sienna white and yellow towards the end so I've run into blue so I need to put this in. So this is a reflection, going that way, that way, and then it's going to the water's edge. So I get a rock there, and there, it's actually catching the light, okay? And then here, we've got some shapes like that. We've got some more rocks, you know, coming up to this gate. So just the edge of this, uh, edge of the grass here which I want to keep lovely and light all right I want to keep that shape um, I want to see the green 
of that mountain hitting that shape as well and uh, use the texture of your brush to bring out some of these little shapes at the bottom of the mountain uh, they just kind of glaze glaze the green so you're not got an actual uh, very very kind of dark tone all over because you get reflected lights in there okay so the thing is here now we've got uh, similar to what we did at the top um, I do need some more blue sorry because uh, they want the reflection in the river in the lake to correspond to this reflex this mountain range in the sky so we're going to work from about here down to there okay but I might, I might have to cover up quite a bit of that but it doesn't really matter so from here which is that lovely shape uh, we're going down here and then uh, we've got these other marks here you can leave that as it goes behind the mountain because we're going to use a bit of blue uh, to bring that out so we can scratch things we can put light in uh, we can go darker it's all about the shapes okay make things up as well and have some reflective blues because we'll have a bit of kind of water shape there if in doubt give it a clue if in doubt just leave light where you're not going to give you light now we paint the light back in you see and then we need to mix some white again with uh, cerulean blue and ultramarine blue to give us our sky colour all right and we've got the same thing happening here it's going that way all right it goes across the uh, surface of the rock all right <laughs> it goes dark in places so we add some let's see uh, uh, ultramarine blue we also add white like i said we do the same thing we did with the sky uh, and we can go around some of the rocks uh -huh. reflections in the water but as we get to this it's very very light so we want that to stand out more so that's the top of the mountain range on the left hand side <coughs> and then we follow this range all the way to where it disappears behind this mountain and we get a lovely head edge, lovely straight edge about there. Okay, so it's right underneath, uh, about there, actually. You want it to be underneath the reflected light, okay? Uh, we get more white, blue, you see a alien. So early in one just carry on. And then we're coming to uh, some of these shapes. Uh, so we can go this way now, round the rocks that are coming out, and then even pick out some more rocks as well. Right? That's the that's the shape of this this mountain reflected in the water. Okay. I could cook them so also. Um you will find that as it dries, because you started using white, it, um, it goes a little bit darker. So you might find you have to go over the same thing a couple of times to get the right contrast, that's all. Yeah, it's like up there now it's dry. We've got the same thing happening. It's lighter there uh, and then it goes a bit, a bit darker down here. See? So I want this to be lighter because that gives you that really nice contrast between the sky and the uh, clouds so we need that to be lighter so that's a nice reflection of the sky okay um, again I've lost a bit of my, my mountain where it's reflected in the water so I want some more blue and some alizarine again to make that lovely dark no white just a lovely shape from here 
putting that in, in the water, okay? And then that goes lovely darks, same there, uh, and it's actually, you can see this, the reflection of this hill in the same place, can you see? And if you go too far, get a little brush as well, with a bit of detail stuff, put some white with it, you know? Because if we go too far, we can always put some of these shapes back that we've lost, which is actually the reflection, the light at the bottom of these hills down here. Like that. Okay. So they just pick out a slight uh, change in tone going up the mountain here. Like oh, so it's a reflection of this actually, like that. So you're seeing these uh, shapes, and that's all you're seeing here. So it kind of reflects in the water. But you don't have to just keep little glazes if you like. <coughs> little siennas. A glaze of sienna here is really nice because you can see through it uh, and it warms up like that. So it makes that warmer. So you put the same kind of glaze. A glaze is a uh, colour with a lot of well, you can put a bit of water with it and glaze it, or scumble it in, like that. Or you can put a lot of water with it. And that's why I've got the same lovely warmth in that mountain top. Right. And I've got the reflection of the light on the, um, on the lake. Keeping the brightness of the colours, which is really, really, really important. Okay? As I'm working my way down now, I can see that uh, <coughs> I'm quite happy with these a bit because I need some more light actually. If you look at the mountain, um, which I know its name, probably somebody shouting at me when they see it, maybe such a thing. Uh, I'm going to use a bit of yellow and white and some sienna, okay, because we want this um, beautiful, strong. Now, when I look at this mountain here now, where I'm getting the light or the sun catching those ridges, it goes a very, it goes a lot lighter. Can you see? <coughs> so here, for instance, uh, it's coming down here. And I'm getting these lovely kind of light areas, and they actually go across this uh, this side of this mountain as well. As you get up here, you get a little bits of it because they're further away. Just as it changes tone of eye, yeah. <coughs> We can use the white and the yellow uh, with on the green on this uh, shirt, which is a bit of reflection in the water as well. So keep that area nice and light. Because uh, and as you get down to the water, you can do the same thing. You can have a, an e exact line of where land meets water. Like that. Uh, we're going to do trees over that, so we do want that to to stand out a bit. Uh, got the same thing happening underneath because <coughs> the trees are reflected in the water. Okay, I'm aware of the time and we're going to have to move on quite quick. Um, let's see, and another wing. Again, I've lost this, but uh, I'll put it back in a bit. That lovely warm colour there, uh, which goes out into the lake, which is coming from the side actually. But. And then up here, we're just getting little bits of. Reflected lights in the in the uh, side of the mountain as you get these reflections, um, and then the I missed a bit. There we need some kind of again yellowy, yellow kind of greens. Now the sunlight's catching the bottom of this mountain, and it, it leaves hard edges in places. So that's what we're trying to achieve like that, to give it a bit of depth. Okay, usually when the shadows hit something, the, bright, the brightest part is where the shadow hits the mountain. So you want to add more light to it. And then here I can just put in some of this light hitting the side of this mountain there on the left hand side. Because it is coming from, but as you're getting down to the valley floors behind it's going lighter. So you get these really nice uh, areas of light. Uh, you can get them at the top as well, some little shapes, and then just don't do too much 
here, you've, you've got these shapes here, and don't do too much. Glaze over the blue, you get a nice shape, <coughs> and then that's going behind the, the hill. You don't have to do too much here, you put one or two in, but you don't have to do them all, you know. It's just the reflection, which is coming the opposite direction now. So if I get some blue again, and um, we've got some like, nice kind of blue reflections on the hills in the background. Okay, and it's just hint, hint at something. Put a bit there as well. You know, beautiful light on those mountains. This one, as you can see, it's reflected in the water. So again, because I've got this kind of new shape, and I get down to about here, I've got the same shape on in reverse, yeah? Uh, which is something like that. That's coming across here, actually. Yeah, like that. So that's the reflection of that kind of curvy bit going into the, the, the water. Just leave that alone. Um, any kind of, if you look at some of these rocks, we've got lovely lights catching the tops, which is something like that. Yeah, <coughs> um, right on the edges, and then it comes around the corner, so you get that light there, and then the top of the rock as well, you get these lights. Yeah? So this gives it a bit of three dimension. Uh, we've got the side of this one, which is uh, quite light. I've made that rock bigger, but uh, artistic license. You can have a couple of rocks there. Uh, there's one in the dis in the background, like that. There's one here, which just breaks up that uh, lovely big shape in the foreground. Okay, and then we're going to use quite a bit of yellow. So let's get a bit more yellow because I've done it. <coughs> out of the tube again just sticks it's kind of going gooey I don't know why it is a process yellow this so uh, it's one of those the uh, where they make the pigment or what anyway I've got quite a lot of yellow there so so what I was doing is mixing white with yellow give us this beautiful area of light in the foreground. I can put it in really thick actually. Uh, and this is this clump of grass uh, in these areas, okay. Uh, underneath it's darker. So it's going blue and green, okay. So we've got the same clump of grass uh, and but then we we're dragging underpainting or the under shadow into it like that. and then taking this across and then painting around some rocks and whatever. Some rocks are created nice textures then some rocks are, have got uh, this yellow tone or this alizarine tone some are big some are little some are white yeah so again we're looking at all these different shapes. Uh, Alizarine. Again, nice darts in your foreground. Right. And we've got some lovely darts in the background here as well. So again, we paint the negative shape around that clump of grass. And that gives you some of these lovely shapes of rocks that, uh, in this area. So as well as positive rocks we can make, um, yeah, we can paint around the rock and make it, uh, put, put the shadows around it. Got the same thing kind of happening here with the yellowy bits. Um, this is going to be nice and dark because I need that to be nice contrast. Uh, again, against that light catching that rock and then it just blends into the rest of the water if you want, so you just scumble it. Um, here 
texture as well. Keep those lovely shapes. Stand back. What time is it? 22. Stand back, yeah, keep that lovely shape. Don't worry about it runs, I've not even done the fence posts, uh, things like that, yeah. You don't have to put everything in. Um, <coughs> if we do do, if we do do do, I'm going to pick up a bit of blue and some alizarine again. Um, get me a palette knife and just paint the edge of the palette knife. Uh, and where this comes out. Got this fence, okay, which is in the right place, and then it goes in the other direction. So, paint it again. So, the Lord's left, and you get the reflection. So, it's going that way. You see? And then at the edge, you get a post, and you get a post there. And so, therapeutic. Just to create these marks without actually doing anything. You know, just using a palette knife. They're just darks and lights, aren't they? So again, I'm going to, but this time I'm going to use, not again, I'm going to use alizarine and green. Because these are the, the dark spots. Very strong dark. So if you can see, that night is a very dark tone. Because it's, it's complementary, it's, it's got uh, um, green and red, which complement each other. And again, as we get down to the grass, we can go in an opposite direction. We can pick out some of the rocks. Uh, and just even add, add in a few darts, uh, gives that grass a lovely texture. I do like the colours there, though, I don't want to lose them. So I'm just looking around the object, trying to paint other things that uh, give this great depth uh, and texture. So I do like the texture on that rock there, so I'm going to leave that because it's reflected light. And then the top of this one is very dark. <coughs> I, know. I can actually make this one, make this other one a rock as well. Okay, lovely textures, that's all we're after. Um, I've got something here which we can make a simple shape. Um, that is actually where the, the lake is. And then the rocks going off into these other shapes around here. And then as you're going further away, they're going smaller. And then they go into this beautiful, I'll do that way. So if you put your brush that way, you get pointy bits at the top as well. Uh, and we want that light reflecting inside there. Quite, I kind of like that, so I want that light to reflect inside that shadow. <coughs> I'm going to use some um, small brush that I've got, smallish. Bit of sienna and a touch of uh, alizarine. Okay, and then over this side we've got these. Uh, oh, it's stronger colour actually. Bit more sienna and alizarine. Hardly any water you want. Just have a dry brush. Yeah, because what I want to do now is just blob in some of these trees. A technical term for painting trees is blobbing. Sorry, it's not really. It's a bit of fire. Um, we've got the same reflection in the water, so we do the same thing there. Make sure you do the same. They've all got lines, okay. You do go a little bit darker in the water, so you can have a touch of blue to that, because you're actually seeing the reflection of it and the underside of it, uh, okay. <coughs> Make it uh, a nice reflected shapes. Uh, if you see anything else, like you've got some over there, and then we do the same thing with 
this palette knife, get your colour, get the edge, uh, just the edge that's all, you know, don't get too thick. Keep that one side because you're going to need that brush. And then I can join them up. So I've got this. Uh, shape. Of the um, the trees. <coughs> Just with the tip of the brush, really. Which is this. Like that, okay. So you do get a, a hard edge. distance and then you get uh, a hair edge where the land meets the sea um, the water uh, in places we don't have it all over just in certain areas uh, uh, going across the lake and uh, those row of trees that actually make it look like uh, you've got trees there as well can't see it all, it's behind the edge. Okay, <laughs> lovely. Um, clean your palette knife, clean your brush, do a bit of scumbling. Again, we want this to be lighter so we can scumble that in. And it's the reflection of this sky. It should be the same, anyway. Similar colour. Reflection, that's all. That's all you need. You know, you know. You don't have to look exactly like it. Um, there's a bit at the bottom here, which is uh, a bit lighter near the mountain. <coughs> Just to bring out that edge, uh, as it comes down here and into that. Beautiful colours. You can lighten this, we can splatter it. You can get your little brush. I've got um I've got an actual well, I did have, I found them. A stippling brush that I use quite a lot for splattering. And if you like. It's got stiff bristles, which is that one. It's like a brush that's been cut off. Okay, it's still on. Yeah. It's a brush that's been chopped off. So I use that for kind of splattering paint. So I dip it in your water, pick up some white, yeah? It doesn't have to be all white, you can have blue with it. And then we could just splatter this area. And it gives you all these different kind of textures in there. They look like little pebbles and things, yeah? You can use this as well for cloud shapes. Quite a coarse rough brush, yeah. it's all about the depth and making shapes, you can use a small brush to make big shapes, uh, because we've got some sienna in there, like that, we can uh, actually put sienna rocks in like this, can you see, over the top, so you're getting these light shapes, don't make them all the same size, just have some blobs and some light blobs and some dark blobs and uh, there's a bit of water there as well you want it to start doing that so the lighter blobs is the sunlight catching the pebbles uh, just on the edges and it's amazing what it does really because it just gives you that simple shape okay. like the rocks that have got the light on top uh, here for instance and of course here Sunlight catching. Okay, uh, keep that lovely distance. Bit of white and yellow. In. Again, you can emphasise that uh, that lovely, lovely yellow because we can glaze over that. Is it? So you use white with it, it becomes opaque. So that means it's stronger, very strong. And you can use this anywhere. You can see 
We'll just use clumps of grass, if you like. We can go down here as well because we can get that really nice this light in the distance. I don't want to glaze all this because it's beautiful and bright that, when it's coming out at me. So that's what I want it to do. Um, I've got a few trees that are quite light against the background. So I've got this kind of light shape uh, and then it goes dark. Um, again, use, uh, use a palette knife. Anyway. Just little things. Little things. Um, again, lovely white, yellow, white, mixed together. You see? That's a beautiful colour. This is the grass. So the grass that I covered up earlier on. The beauty of acrylic. You can't do this with, the, well you can, you can do it with the, <laughs> the gouache. You can't do it with watercolour I was going to say, but you can do it with gouache. So, uh, that's really nice light. And then as you're coming down to the edges, it's going a bit lighter still. So you've got this really lovely light on that field, uh, in the mountain ranges, around the trees. Beautiful. Okay, and that's all there is to it, really. Keep this lovely sunlight. That's it. I mean, if you're looking around the picture thinking, what can I do next? You've done enough. Okay, so that's the point I usually stop. Uh, have a look at it. If there's anything else I can see he wants doing, uh, then I go back to it. But um, I was taking the tape off, leave that nice border. You can see what it looks like if you want to frame it. Uh, it's true. Uh, get the tape off. And I've got some clamps to hold the picture in place. And you take the tape off. Uh -huh. Again, we're on just normal paper, so I've not used anything, anything posh, just normal lining paper, painting with acrylic, which is polymer base pigment yeah oops that's what happens if you don't clamp it the trouble is on the edges of my board now i've got raised gouache bits and the clamps don't actually hold it because <laughs> because it's too high up you see so i make sure the clamps are right on it's a bit fiddly See, this one's not got clumped in it because it's, it's raised up. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to varnish it because when you varnish it, all those darks will come out, which in turn makes the light look lighter. And there you go. Um, a lovely view of Buttermere Lake. Yeah, And a lovely sunny day again uh, that we don't get too often in, in the late district. Okay, so thanks for watching. Again, have a go. Just use all that colour and let it be vibrant. And then um, I'll have a look. Yep. I'm always out and about, so I can't kind of do it any time or all the time, but uh, I will go back to it and comment on any, you know. But I think I don't use any kind of derogatory things about anybody's work it's always positive if I can find anything positive or if I like it I just say I like it so don't worry if I don't start saying I don't like that mountain I don't I won't do anything like it. it's your interpretation anyway as long as you're doing what you enjoy doing that's fine by me I'm happy okay so thanks for watching and I'll uh, I'll see you tomorrow I one o'clock tomorrow 
in the afternoon, so Thursday and Friday is one o'clock. Okay, no? we're class um, eight tomorrow and nine on Friday. I think it's probably nine. Okay, see you soon. I'll post some this evening. Bye for now. Kick the thing again.